Hey everyone, it's been a super long time and I'm so sorry that it's taken me so long to make some more videos, but I wanted to kick off this series on Bug Bounty Redacted. This series is going to be a bunch of different reports that I've submitted to bug bounty programs and essentially how I've gone from the discovery process to then reporting it to these organizations and what these reports look like. As a part of the first episode, I'm going through two bugs that are reported to bounty programs. One of them is Redis being exposed and the other one is HA proxy being exposed. In both these scenarios, no authentication was required to access these services. I hope that you find value from these videos and if there's anything that you'd like me to do in these videos that I perhaps am not doing, just feel free to comment and I'll, I'll try and encapsulate it as a part of the series later. The first step when it comes to finding these exposed Redis services is the discovery step. And essentially when I found these Redis services, I followed some pretty simple steps to get there. I collected a number of assets from data sources and I fed them into Nmap basically. These assets were collected from things like Census, Shodan, and regular subdomain enumeration, like open source data sources. Once I had collected all these assets, I was able to use Nmap to discover that on port 6389 was open on one of these assets. After investigating a little bit further, I found that this is the port for Redis. And when connecting to this port via Netcat, I was able to interact with the Redis service without any authentication in this scenario. So what did the report look like? Well, the report was pretty basic. I started it off by saying, hey, look, there's this exposed Redis interface on 6389 on this host. And it looks like this Redis configuration for the server doesn't really require any authentication and can be interacted with via Netcat or similar tools. I told them that, you know, I didn't really test for the ability to execute arbitrary code outside of Redis's Lua sandbox. But it was something that I believed that could potentially be possible at least um, performing information disclosure and denial of service attacks. The next part of the report is very crucial. It's how do you reproduce the vulnerability or the issue. And in this part, I, I basically said the first thing is to netcat into this host specifying the port 6389. So I specified a command for them and I said this is how you access this Redis service by using netcat. Then I went on to say, look, you can use this command info when you're connected to this Redis service that will return a bunch of information about the Redis service. And just generally, it proves that we have access to this Redis service without any authentication. I also showed them that it was possible to list all the keys in Redis. So if you know what Redis is, essentially it's a cache. And in Redis, there's keys and values. So what you can do is potentially modify these keys and values to lead to other adverse effects. In this scenario, I just showed that, hey, I can list all the keys. I didn't modify any of the values because I didn't want to disrupt any services, but um, I, I listed all the keys and said, hey, this is proof that I can access this Redis service. And lastly, I showed them that I could access the config. So I used the command config get asterisk to access the config, and I showed them that that was possible as well. Once I gained access to the Redis CLI, I realized that there were multiple different attack vectors possible. I didn't really attempt them, but I did make a effort to reference all of the things that I read on the internet that could lead to these further attacks. So I included that at the bottom of my report. And I think that this provides some context to the people triaging it so they can understand really what is the impact or potential impact of this vulnerability or report. The next thing I want to quickly move on to is finding the HA proxy statistics panel. So when it comes to discovery for that, it's actually quite similar to what I did for Redis. I enumerated all the assets and all the ports for the company on the external internet. And after finding the Redis service exposed, I realized that this organization probably has more things exposed that they don't realize is on the external internet. So I, that indicator to me was enough for me to start digging in further and trying to find other things that were exposed on their attack surface. I ran my Nmap scans and I found that there was an asset with port 4444 open, exposing a HA proxy statistics panel. So the report, what did that look like? It was really simple. Sometimes reports don't need to be super complex. They can be really simple, straight to the point, show the impact, and essentially um, that's enough. So in this report, I said, hey, I found this HA proxy statistics panel found on this host on this port and you can access it by visiting this URL. You'll see that the statistics panel for HA proxy is shown, and I've attached a screenshot to confirm that this endpoint is accessible externally. 
you know, I, I also mentioned that I didn't think there was significant security impact, but it was an outdated version of HA proxy. And it was vulnerable to an information disclosure vulnerability that was disclosed publicly. I didn't really test the POC for that information disclosure vulnerability because it seemed like it could potentially disrupt the server. It would have potentially sent over a million requests um, to be made to the server. I didn't want to really disrupt any services running on that server. This is what the statistics panel looked like. And this is enough for me to report it to a program because these are the sort of things that probably shouldn't be exposed and do lead to more exposure of an attack surface for an organization. So this is the end of this episode. I will be making more of these and I will be releasing these every week. This is something that probably will go on for five to 10 episodes at most. And look, this was a pretty basic episode just covering Redis and HA proxy being exposed externally. But I do look forward to discussing more complex or more interesting vulnerabilities as a part of this series. Thanks for tuning in and thanks for all the support. Oh, 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 oh,